In the dark world of demons, there exists an upper moon demon known for being an obsessed fanatic. Hello and welcome to today's video where we'll be talking about the hidden truths you might not know about the upper moon rank 5, Gyoko. Now, even considering all of the other demons we've seen in the series, Gyoko stands out with his odd and strange appearance. He's got a pale white form that's twisted into a muscular torso with no arms. Kind of like a statue coming to life. A statue with multiple infant-sized hands that are lined along his head and back, ready to strike at any moment. His face is the stuff of nightmares, with green-lipped mouths for eyes, and his true eyes resting vertically along his forehead. Engraved symbols are marked in his forehead and mouth, signs of his power and rank. And in battle, Gyoko sheds his humanoid form, revealing a monstrous, merman-like creature covered in transparent scales. And when he brings out this form, it usually marks the beginning of the end for those who faced him. And with this monstrous appearance and terrifying power, Gyoko, Upper Moon 5, struck fear into the hearts of those who crossed his path. But of course, you should take it with a grain of salt, as we all know what happens to Gyoko, since he wasn't able to have his sympathy episode compared to all the upper ranks that we see in the series. Instead, he gets absolutely murked by the missed Hashiro Muichiro. But don't you worry, Gyoko fans, if there are any of you out there, because apparently his backstory was written in the second official fan book of the series. So let's go ahead and talk about the backstory of Gyoko Upper Moon Rank 5. When he was human, he was called Minaki, and Minaki grew up and lived alone in a fishing village by the sea where people thought he was weird for collecting fish bones and doing some odd things. His parents drowned while fishing, and their bodies were badly hurt when found, but despite all of that, he saw beauty in it. And after that, the villagers kept away from him, thinking that he was crazy. When a village child teased him, Minagi lost his temper and ended up killing the child. And because of that, he was attacked by the child's parents and left to die. Muzan then found him and turned him into a demon, obtaining his new name, Gyoko. Since then, as a demon, he ate children's flesh and changed his body as he pleased. He hated all living things except for Muzan, laughing at them from the deepest depths of his heart. Again, Gyoko is a demon whose whole thing is his intense passion for what he calls his art. He sees himself as an artiste, but his creativity is twisted with sadism. Arrogant and egotistical, he becomes easily angered when others fail to appreciate his so-called genius. Gyoko harbors deep jealousy and pettiness. He lashed out at Hotaru Haganeska out of envy unable to tolerate Hotaru's dedication to his craft, which he felt overshadowed his very own. Gyoko had a strange taste for gruesome things as well. As when Doma suggested he put a human head on a pot like a plant, Gyoko really liked the idea, as we see when he attacked swordsmiths using their bodies to create what he thought was a beautiful work of art. He enjoyed causing pain and making sure that his victims suffered a whole lot, as he twisted swords into them to make it hurt even more. And Gyoko, other than his appearance setting him apart from other demons, takes an absurd amount of pleasure in making people suffer. Now let's go ahead and talk about Gyoko's blood demon art. Gyoko's main technique involves his porcelain vases. He can summon these vases anywhere and create many at once. Gyoko can teleport between these vases almost instantly, allowing him to move quickly and dodge attacks. He can also trap people inside the vases, compressing them to fit inside. And inside the vases, Gyoko can merge victims together or create whatever the hell he wants. Now, during his attack on the swordsmith village, Gyoko summoned large fish-like creatures to terrorize the villagers. These creatures had various abilities like sharp claws or poisonous needles. They were quite powerful but were easily defeated by the Hashiras, Mitsuri, and Muichiro. And based on what we've seen so far, Gyoko's techniques are based on sea creatures. He can summon fish monsters with different abilities like shooting poison needles or summoning octopus tentacles. And he can also manipulate water using it to attack and trap his enemies. And of course, being from a fishing village, Gyoko's attacks can be quite deadly, capable of cutting targets or literally suffocating them to death. And now let's talk about Gyoko's appearances in the anime. In the Red Light District arc after the defeat of the Upper Moon Rank 6 duo, Gyoko and Daki, Gyoko was called to the Dimensional Infinite Fortress for a meeting with Muzo, and it was here that Gyoko claimed to have gathered information about the Blue Spider Lily, a substance that interested Muzo. However, Muzo was unconvinced and beheaded Gyoko. But despite this, Muzan still sent Gyoko along with Antegu to the Swordsmith's village. And this decision was likely influenced by Muzan's desire to retrieve the Blue Spider Lily and eliminate any threats to his rule posed by the Demon Slayers, and about the chaos that happened in the Swordsmith village arc. Upon arriving at the Swordsmith's village, Gyoko demonstrates his cruelty by attempting to devour an innocent Swordsmith. However, he spits the swordsmith out, claiming that he wasn't edible. And it's here that Gyoko and Atengu then split up to wreak havoc in the village. Gyoko then ambushes Moichiro Tokito and two villagers in a shed, showcasing his gruesome artwork made from damaged swordsmiths. He then unleashes a horde of needlefish on Moichiro and traps him in a water prison pot. 
Meanwhile, Gyoko targets Hotaru Haganesuka, quite enraged by the swordsmith's dedication to his craft. However, despite torturing Hotaru, Gyoko fails to break his concentration, and it is here that Muichiro intervenes, revealing his slayer mark. The fierce battle then ensues, with Gyoko unleashing his octopus vase hell technique. However, Muichiro's skill proves superior as he effortlessly beheads Gyoko, ending his reign of terror in the village. Gyoko's last moments are spent in a futile attempt to insult Muichiro before meeting his ultimate death. And before we end this video, of course we've got some trivia of Gyoko that some of you might still not know about him. Now, Gyoko is known for his ornate pots and fish-like demons, literally bearing a name meaning ball, jewel, and pot, jar, and vase. His human identity Managi reflects the kanji for benefit, fish, and ceremony. Notably, his affinity for summoned fish demons echoes Junji Ito's creations in Gyo. Renowned as Muzan's favorite upper rank, Gyoko's exquisite pottery fetches some pretty high prices. And unlike many upper ranks, Gyoko's past remains largely unexplored in the manga and the anime, although again, glimpses are provided in the second fanbook. And finally, despite his enmity towards most, Gyoko harbored no hatred for Muzan, and only a select few, including Muichiro Tokito, who have witnessed his true form. And that's gonna be it for this video, which was pretty short, but hey, the guy literally got his head cut off and sliced up like sashimi Frieza style. If only he had his life flash before his eyes like all the upper moons did which coincidentally we do have videos for. So if you're interested in any of those videos, you can check those out right here and for more anime content just like this, you can keep it ripe with Anime Mego.